Welcome to the video. You're here because you're probably wondering how to uh, put together your C-mount adapter for the Sony RX02. You can also watch this video to uh, gauge how difficult of a task this is for you and whether it's something that you can handle. It is much easier to put this together than it is a Naked Black Magic, but it does require some fine tool manipulation. And just as a reminder, if you're new to this setup, uh, the advantage of using a C-mount lens on the Sony Arc 2 is normally this camera has a very narrow field of view, not ideal for FPV, but lenses such as the Azure Photonics 6.5 mm f1.4 can increase the field of view and maintain sharpness in the corners. In addition, some of these C-mount lenses are quite fast and will boost the low light capabilities of your camera. These are the tools necessary for doing this little project. You're going to need needle nose pliers, a little bulb squeeze, one of these plastic spudger tools for prying things gently without causing damage, a Phillips double zero screwdriver, fine tip tweezers, a Torx T4 driver. I have this little uh, I fix it tool with interchangeable tips as well as a Phillips number one driver. And lastly, a Sharpie. This is for aligning your lens and making a mark to have accurate focus. This installation requires no permanent damage to your camera and you can always reassemble the camera back to normal. Before beginning the disassembly process, be sure to remove the battery from the compartment. All right, let's get started. First off are these four screws. They are T4 heads. So uh, get your driver and remove all four of these. All right, you're gonna remove that and um, put the screws in a Ziploc bag so they're nice and safe. You don't wanna lose these in, in case you wanna put your camera back together and keep this safe and clean in a little Ziploc bag along with your screws. Next, we're going to remove this uh, stick-on cover and I like to use an X-Acto knife. You just got to be real careful. So I'm just going to choose a corner and uh, gently run it along the seam here and then pry it upward. You want to make as little of a mark as possible. Once you got a little bit of a uh, corner peeled up there, Okay, try to hold it. Then you can get a plastic spudger tool to uh, save the corner and kind of work it around. And at this point, I have enough uh, surface area to just grab it with my fingers and peel it off like a sticker. Okay, next up we have these uh, Phillips head screwdrivers. There's just four of them here. You can use a Phillips double zero screwdriver to undo these. And I'm gonna put these screws into a, a safe little Ziploc bag. Okay, that's it for this front cover. It comes off quite easily. But notice there are some loose uh, nuts that fall out. Make sure to grab these with some tweezers. Uh, keep them very safe because they're hard to source. And once again, put them in your Ziploc bag. Now for this part, uh, we do need something from it. It's actually this gasket. So take your X-Acto knife and gently remove this gasket from that groove. And you can go ahead and replace that sticker that you peeled off earlier so you keep it nice and safe. Since we have this with us, let's install it into your C-mount adapter. Just notice that one part of the groove has a little bit of a curve there. Try to match that curve with the curve on the gasket. And just starting there, uh, you can press that in and it goes in pretty easily. You just gotta work your way all the way, all the way around. All right, that's done. You can set this aside for now. What we're gonna do is remove this whole lens assembly here. To get at it, the first part we need to remove is this Wi-Fi antenna. Uh, it has a double zero Phillips screwdriver, which we can uh, remove, or remove the screw, not the screwdriver. And this comes off pretty easily. Just set it aside and keep the screw with the um, Wi-Fi assembly so you know where it goes. Okay, next up is this little uh, sticker here, and you can use uh, some fine tip tweezers to 
get under there and you might have to press this down to prevent it from lifting up the, the chip underneath. Just peel that up gently and you don't need to go all the way. Then you can get your uh, spudger tool, go in there between the board and the connector and uh, just gently twist upward. You might need to brace the PCB a little bit as you do this. There we go, got it. And you can fold this back. Okay, next we gotta remove the um, little speaker here and the microphones below. You can start with the speaker. Uh, grab hold of it using these tweezers here and just gently pull up on that plastic bit that's holding it. Meanwhile, you can shift that battery out of the way. I think it's a battery. And just find places on the plastic chassis to pull up. And see, it already kind of came out on its own. Fold that battery out of the way. And uh, you can just keep this all together in one assembly like this. Just fold it back. And then for the uh, Wi-Fi thing over here, uh, you can use your spudger tool to gently pry off or peel off the uh, adhesive from the uh, plastic plate underneath and very gently push that back away so you can provide clearance for removing this whole lens assembly. Okay, our camera is looking a little crazy right now, but that's okay. Its guts are kind of spilling all over the place. So this is the Wi-Fi module, I believe. You can fold this out of the way, and underneath is a uh, black double zero Phillips screw. Get in there with your driver and unscrew it. Uh, keep this screw, we'll be using it for later. Okay, just uh, gently maneuver this thing out of its casing. Uh, try not to like pull or cut the, uh, the ribbon in any way. There we go. And we can just leave that kind of floating out for the time being. Okay, we're starting to get into the heart of things. Um, next up are these two silver screws which are holding together the internal chassis. They're both uh, Phillips double zero again. Get down in there, this one's pretty deep, so just be careful. Um, unscrew that little guy. Oh yeah, it's magnetic, thank goodness. Save that screw. And let's do the other one, it's located right here. Kinda hard to see for you, let me push that out of the way. Okay, great. Next, we got to uh, gently remove these two uh, sensor ribbon cable connectors. I don't know if they're both sensor ribbon cables, but they're both kind of like those these very uh, fragile uh, mezzanine connectors. But the way to work with them is insert your plastic spudger, or if you have a propeller, you just cut it with scissors to make a tool like this. Insert it onto one side, and then we're gonna twist up in that direction in order to unseat the plug on one side gently. So stick it in there and then twist. Very easy. This one might be a little bit more difficult because it's more low profile, but same concept. You can work your way in there between the uh, chassis and the plug or the PCB and the plug. Get down in there a little bit. Don't force it and then twist. See, quite gentle and easy and uh, it might help to just move them out of the way a little bit so it makes removing the lens assembly a bit easier. Okay, we're gonna make our final preparations towards removing the uh, image sensor and lens assembly. Um, so let's remove this uh, ribbon cable here. It's just a pull push fit connector, so you can just, just pull on it like that and it comes right out. And uh, obviously save this. There's also a little foam block down here you can grab Grab it with a pair of tweezers and set that aside for safekeeping. Okay, almost there. And we got a little piece of tape that's uh, holding on the image module to the chassis or the sense let the lens assembly to the chassis. So just peel that up. You don't need to remove it completely. Okay, lastly, um, there's a bit of foam tape here. So you can use your plastic spudger to kind of like push your way in there and then kind of run it back and forth. Maybe a little twisting action. 
just to get it so it's uh, gonna come out easier later. It's easier to do it while it's in its assembly right now. So just kind of work the spudger in there to release the uh, foam tape. You don't have to do it all the way, just get try to get most of it. Okay, so you can see it's already like coming loose now. <laughs> this camera is not held together by much. Um, so you can grab on the chassis using your tweezers. Be careful not to uh, accidentally pull on that. Make sure your tweezers are above it. And just pull upward, and it's kind of just all flopping out. What we have to do now is separate the uh, sensor and lens assembly from the chassis because it's connected via this cable here. So to do that, you can um, take your fingers, just be careful not to pull on that. So to separate this module from the chassis, the general direction that we're gonna be pulling is that way. Grab on here and here, and then you can gently work it and twist it until it uh, kind of releases from the chassis. Just be careful that you uh, brace and that you're not um, pulling on any cables. And uh, you can do a bit of a twisting motion. That foam tape is a bit tenacious, um, but you may find that it eventually releases. And as long as you don't pull on this chassis, you should be good. All right, we can get to work on removing this little lens here and exposing the sensor. We do not need to remove these three back screws because they hold the sensor and the shims. Just leave that be. Instead, what we can do is uh, first let's peel off this little bit of foam tape that was giving us some trouble earlier and set that aside. You can also peel back this little foam strip to expose that silver screw because we'll need to remove that later. And the lens assembly is held on with these three little double zero Phillips screws. Let's remove these. Let's put these screws in a separate little baggie that we're gonna keep with all of our lens assembly stuff. And remove this silver screw right here. You might have to grab a hold of it with some tweezers. Okay, before we can pull it apart, there's actually a hidden screw on the back side. Be sure not to forget this little one. It's got a uh, red color to it. And once again, it's double zero Phillips. Might be even a triple zero, it's pretty small. And put this pink screw into your bag for safekeeping. Okay, now we should be able to pull it apart. Wow, that came off easily. Okay, that's great. Uh, before putting this lens assembly away, you should probably take this screw, or sorry, spring, and put it in with these screws. The reason why is it has some grease on it, and you don't wanna get that grease on the uh, back of this aspherical lens here, which is quite sensitive to uh, smudging. Okay, now that we have the loose parts removed, we can take this and put it in our Ziploc bag and uh, remove the excess air so things don't jostle around and close it up. Okay, remember this little silver screw that we just removed. We're gonna put it back in using a double zero screwdriver and just to get it to hold this little focus wheel motor and it has threads into the uh, steel plate. So it should go right back in there. And uh, it seems to be a little misaligned. I'm gonna make sure it's all straight and then proceed with tightening it. Okay, great. Okay, at this point, it's a good idea to take a break, walk away, relax a little bit, so you can come back to uh, reinstalling the sensor assembly. Okay, so the way it goes together is um, like so. <laughs> it's a little bit complicated to describe. But like that. You see what I did there? So it's kind of underneath it, but it's also adjacent to the, uh, the chassis. Now when you have that roughly in the same configuration, what you gotta be mindful of is this little ribbon cable. So make sure to push this top part down so that as you put it in, it kind of folds the correct direction. And push it down in. And then once you kinda got it halfway seated, rearrange the uh, sensor ribbon cables so that they're not uh, 
uh, getting stuck. Kind of push them inward toward the center of the camera, all while holding this um, ribbon cable up here and push it down. Now that you have it mostly seated, you can just make sure that cable is folded down all the way and it's tucked back in there. And then you can go around and kind of press on the uh, sensor housing to make sure it's fully seated. Okay, so um, once you see that the screws are aligned and when you press on it, there's no looseness, you can go ahead and reinstall these little silver machine screws. So it's the double zero Phillips. Let's start with the easier screw. It's uh, located on the left here. And it seems like it's not quite lined up, so I just had to jostle it a little bit to get it to line up with the hole. Okay, and then the second one is on the top, uh, deep down in the camera, so you gotta have a steady hand for this one. All right, we're doing well. Next up are the uh, sensor plugs. So um, align them and reposition them. You might have to push them down or pull them up a little bit. Um, try not to use like metal tweezers for it because you could damage the contacts. Try to use either your fingernails or a plastic spudger to kind of like jostle them into place. Once you got them somewhat or mostly aligned, uh, you can press on one side down and just kind of work it over to click it into place fully. And let's do the other one. The one on the left, this one, tends to require a little more force. Okay, and just uh, make sure to run the spudger back and forth, making sure all of those tiny little contacts are fully seated and then do a uh, visual inspection to see that it's lined up with the PCB. And then remember this little silly piece of tape. Um, we can kind of gently smoosh that down on there using the spudger tool. I like these words, Sp spudger, smoosh. <laughs> okay, so um, this next step is not 100% required. It is required if you're using um, the Azure 6.5 millimeter lens. See, it's such a fast lens that the back uh, lens element is quite wide in diameter, and it will actually uh, slightly impinge upon uh, the edge of this little battery, uh, coin battery tray. So I think the best way to approach this is to not damage anything, but instead just remove this whole plastic tray. So that's what I'm gonna show you how to do now. If you're using lenses that don't have a really wide back end, this lens is pretty like rare in that it, you know, most lenses are not this wide, but if you do plan to use this for FPV and you wanna use that lens, then do this step. Uh, otherwise, you would just reinstall these microphones back into the plastic clip as it was before. But for this tutorial, I'm going to remove the uh, microphones and uh, you just gotta navigate these wires around the uh, plastic clips and uh, just gently pull on them to uh, snap them out of place. Okay, we can set that aside for safekeeping. Now what we can do with these little microphones is instead of just cutting the wires and calling it a day, because uh, you might wanna use them later, uh, Side note, with the um, C-mount lens plate on, the microphones don't pick up a lot of noise, so audio is not going to be <laughs> good at all after this mod. But that's not why you're doing this. You're doing this for FPV. So what you can do now is uh, stuff this um, green wire speaker down into this cavity and just gently fold the green wire in and around. Just tuck it into place as neatly as you can without causing any damage to the wire. And 
and then do the same for the red one. It helps to uh, remove the red wire as much as you can and then stuff it in kind of head first into this little cavity. Okay, great. Not the most elegant thing in the world, but it works okay and it's not gonna come loose. Um, the next thing is um, taking this little speaker and shove it down in there and kind of favor the left side a little bit as far as you can go so that you can make room for this coin battery. Uh, take this coin battery, you might even have to switch hands and bend it backwards so that you can uh, slot it into place next to the speaker. Uh, this little piece of foam that we took out, we can actually use this to uh, hold the speaker and the little coin battery so that they're a little bit more secure. So I just take the tweezers and stuff that down in there uh, between the two elements. Okay, and that will keep that in place. All right, the next step requires your needle nose pliers. You have an option here. You can leave this little tab B and just know that you won't be able to use this lens without having it go click <laughs> because once you thread it into the C-mount, it actually impinges upon this little tab. You see that? Uh, it's not much, it's like half a millimeter, but it is enough to bother me every time I put this lens on and I feel like it's not gonna align well with the sensor. So you could be sacrificing image quality if you don't do this step. Um, if you only plan to use lenses with smaller back ends than this, um, you don't need to do this step. But for me, since I'll be using uh, the Azure Photonics lens, I have to do this. So you can just take this tab and bend it upward a little bit so as to increase the uh, clearance diameter of the back uh, lens element. So just make sure you're not pinching any ribbon cables as you do this. Just taking that and then bending it upward. And then, as you can see, um, we now have extra clearance for the uh, C-mount lens to go in without interfering. And uh, just looking at the angle here, it looks like I bent it maybe a little bit too far. So I can bend it back just a hair. And uh, that should be good right there. I prefer to bend it instead of break it off completely because if you do want to reinstall your camera, all you have to do is just bend it back into place. Okay, next up, let's do the uh, Wi-Fi module. Um, or is it Bluetooth? I don't know. <laughs> Either way, I don't really use it, but I do want to put it back into place. So um, grab the FPC with the uh, tweezers and kind of use the stiffener as a brace to plug it in there. Okay, now that that's plugged in, uh, get this um, black screw with the machine threads on it and stage it onto your screwdriver because you're going to need that in the next step. So set that aside and we're going to reposition the small portion of the Bluetooth or the Wi-Fi module into the uh, chassis. And uh, there's a hole, screw hole, that it aligns with. And there's also a uh, alignment pin on the top left corner. So hold that in place and then move the larger portion of the assembly out of the way as you take your black screw. See, this one's got the fine threads because it's uh, threading into steel. So guide that into place and screw that in. All right, next we can fold this uh, cable over to the left, then fold it over to the right to uh, make a kind of a zigzag pattern like that. And then um, while holding that down, fold over the large portion of the module. And then this little tab right here is what's gonna hold this part in place. So you have to kind of shoehorn that in there and then press down. And then we can take this uh, uh, connector here and fold that downward and align it with the with the plug as best as you can. And then press down. So it snaps into place. And then the uh, sticker that's left over, I'm just gonna 
fold that into place neatly and then press it down onto the circuit board. Okay, so make sure that hole is lined up and things are situated roughly. And then we can take the uh, little antenna and make sure that little black screw is in there and shoehorn that in under the uh, same chassis tab and then press down. Hold it in place as you uh, screw that little Phillips double zero screw into there. Okay, and you don't need to tighten it too much. And this little flappy dappy doodad, uh, I just leave it hanging there. It's not gonna cause any issues. Okay, it's time to um, finally install the uh, front seam out plate. Included with your kit are these small silver screws. And um, these screws have a Phillips number one driver on them, and that's because they take a little bit extra force. It's a very strong hold, so you want to make sure not to strip the threads of these screws, hence the larger uh, driver size. Take a moment to um, dust out the front portion using your bulb squeeze thing. Make sure to uh, dust off the uh, back end of the, uh, the plate as well and inspect to make sure that the gasket is still seated properly. Okay, and all you gotta do is just plop this thing right on there. Quite easy. And uh, let's start installing these screws. We're gonna go around and screw them in, but don't screw them all the way, just get them down there so that they're, uh, you know, mostly in. And once you feel some resistance, that's when you stop. Okay, um, just do a little inspection, make sure things are lining up, nothing's too crooked. Uh, we're not quite done yet. So these screws need to be tightened down all the way, which will take a little bit more force. So this is where you kind of use a uh, diagonal technique, kind of do a cross pattern to uh, tighten each screw just a little bit at a time to make sure that there's even pressure on all four points of the plate. And this is when the screwing is going to get a little bit more um, resistance because these screws are slightly longer so that they have a nice secure hold of your C-mount lens in case of a crash. Okay. Um, and also, uh, you don't want to cross-thread these holes. Try to re-engage the existing tapped holes into the plastic. You can inspect the, uh, um, the seam again, and you can see now that the little line there is much thinner because the gasket is being pressed against the seal on the inside of the camera. Take your lens and uh, install it into the seam out. Um, and uh, one thing to note, if you ever want to like waterproof your camera, you can put some uh, Teflon tape around these threads because this seal is waterproof. Uh, the only way water could get into the camera is if uh, through the lens, but that's not too likely. So if you're ever doing some ocean stuff or getting real dirty, um, that might be a good idea. Um, so screw this in there. And notice how it bottoms out without meeting any resistance. There's no clicking, no jamming, no crunching. That's what you want. And uh, next we got to figure out how to focus your lens. Okay, let's get the focus set on our C-mount lens. Uh, first, let's configure the lens. If it does have variable focus, you wanna make sure that it's set to in infinity and then lock that into place. Secondly, your aperture should be as wide as possible, meaning the smallest number as possible. So for me, it's all the way down to 1.4. And what this does is gives the shallowest depth of field so that you can uh, focus it with higher accuracy. Then you can go ahead and install a battery and close that up and boot it up. Let's see if it works. Oh yay, it does, English, cancel. Let's do that later. Okay, so it takes a little longer to boot up after um, doing this mod because it's trying to detect the focus and the motor is spinning freely. You'll also get this error message that comes flashing. Uh, this is okay. It's not gonna uh, affect your footage, 
and uh, it doesn't cause any errors with the camera. So screw in your lens all the way and make sure your lock ring is all the way down. And you'll notice that my image is a little bit blurry. If I point my camera out the window, uh, you can press this little dot button in order to zoom in so you can pull focus easier. You can see it's a little bit blurry. And the reason why, well, first off, you may need to adjust your exposure in order to uh, make sure what you're looking at isn't too bright. So you can go into the menu and uh, uh, adjust your, your ISO, your shutter speed, and all that in order to get the right image. Once you've done that, you can uh, press this little dot to zoom in and you can see it's blurry. So what's wrong is the, the lens is too close to the sensor. So what we need to do is unscrew the lens until the right point at which the image comes into focus. So let's look at the screen again, point it out the window, and let's start unscrewing it until we can see that, you see those tree branches um, behind the, um, the blinds? That might be blown out on the camera, but I can see that the tree branches are in focus. And what you want to do is mark that position on the barrel of your lens where that focus point is. And then you can uh, unscrew the lock ring in order to hold it into place. And just double check once again that things are still in focus and it looks good. Yeah, and that's about it. So the next time you install your lens, let's say you need to change lenses, um, the way you would reinstall it is you screw down the lock nut all the way, screw in the lens all the way, then back it out until you reach that mark that you made. I, I find it convenient to put it on the top of the camera, top and center, and then unscrew the lock nut until it engages. And the best tool for tightening the lock nut, you can use your fingers, but you can also use a, a two and a half millimeter hex driver insert it into that hole, unscrew it lefty-loosey to uh, clamp it up against the back of the lens here. And that holds it nice and securely into place. All right, one last step concerning your settings is the uh, tally light indicator. At nighttime, the front red LED will actually cause light pollution on the image as a result of doing this modification. The solution is to just turn it off. To do that, press the menu button, then go to uh, camera settings number two, then page over to the third page on camera two settings, go under record lamp, and then only rear lamp on. And that will completely fix that issue. You won't get any kind of uh, red light light pollution when doing low light filming with this camera. Okay, and wrapping up, you want to place your loose components into a bag for safekeeping. I like to organize everything into little plastic bags so it's all in one place. So that's it for the C-mount plate installation video. And uh, you can go out there and enjoy getting some cool footage with your lightweight mini cinema camera. Also, this Tiffin 43 millimeter ND filter is a great match for the Azure Photonics 6.5 millimeter lens. Now, regarding your camera settings, I do have another video linked in the description. Make sure to configure your picture profile settings correctly so you can get the best quality footage out of this camera for video editing.